Hi, I'm still Dora Allen Bill Dotan and Svat. Today I'd like to, to address um, some of the more advanced uh, and more aware people among us. Um, because this is a time in which um, many of us, me included, may feel, I already know that we create our realities. So why the hell do I have to be going through this together with those who don't? Um, I grappled with that feeling and those thoughts and um, I'd like to try to comfort uh, those who are, you know, going nuts watching people walking around with masks and rubber gloves and, and don't go in the elevator with me because <laughs> uh, I know it, it, it's hard um, for those of us who know that, that those behaviors are entirely unnecessary um, to be witnessing this and it hurts. So those are the people that I really want to address. Um, I'm going to be putting some substitution values uh, below this video. In Hebrew, um, you'll be able to see it in a translation, uh, translation function online that will prove that our reality is our first child. When God says, uh, your son, or my son, bincha, God is talking about the reality that we create. Um, the Hebrew words uh, that, that all come from the, the, the same root as uh, son is also understanding. As we understand, so we create our reality. Um, it, it's very interesting that the, that word has become bone. In English, um, in Hebrew, bone is etzem, which also means not only bone, but my very self. All of our subsequent children um, that is the, the fruit of our womb, the fruit of our physical seed, are born into the mitziyut that we first created for them. So our first offspring is our reality. That is our son. Um, the Hebrew word Shabbat, Sabbath, is 702, which is also Ben. Um, so Hashem is speaking about the highest level of a creation of the sun, which is our reality, uh, so peaceful that it, it becomes Shabbat. That is what we're working toward. Many of the people around us, the vast majority, have no idea that they're creating their own realities. They simply do not know. It, it looks to them that like reality is given, that decisions are made from, by the government and they can only follow through on them. There's a, a wonderful man in Israel by the name of Shai Dan On, um, he recently interviewed David Icke. I don't agree with um, everything that David Icke says, but in this particular interview, Shai Dan On also translated it into Hebrew, David Icke spoke about the fact that we create our realities, and that which we are convinced of is what is going to happen. In Hebrew, we have two very closely related words. We have mishkan, which comes from the root shachen, which means to dwell. And there's shachnea, which is to convince, which is the same root with another letter ayin on it, which gives it depth. 
the ayin is always, omek is always depth. That which we are deeply convinced of is where we're going to live. Most of the people around us don't know that. Those of us who do know that and see it clearly, I, I know that I'm guilty of this too, I become short-tempered with those who don't see it and, and I see somebody walking into a wall and I'm an idiot, you know, what are you doing to yourself? You don't have to, you know, we have to be patient and just as we were once blind and our teachers showed us the way, the holy prophets, the holy judges showed us the way out of our own blindness so that we can see with that we create our reality. We can see the seeing, we can see our own vision. We're above our physical vision and observing it. We weren't always like that either, those of us who know this. Somebody helped us and we have taken it upon ourselves to become, to, to be in a world in which the vast majority of people don't know and to suffer <clears throat> the effects of what they do to themselves with them. Now sometimes the pain is tolerable and um, sometimes it's much harder. This time it's much harder uh, to, to see the whole world on lockdown. There are very positive things in that too and I'd like to get into that. But this is, this is the deal that, that, that uh, we made. <laughs> that we agreed to come down into a world in which most of the people are floundering in the dark, darkness and to endure that which they bring themselves, they bring on themselves with them, uh, even if we don't do it patiently all the time. So if you see what's going on and, and you're, 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 you know, you feel like slamming your head against a wall because you can't understand that others don't see it, um, be patient with them. You know, once we couldn't see it either. The world is going through a reset. So many people all over the world in places like New York, or Tokyo, London, or Singapore, get up in the morning, six o'clock in the morning, the alarm clock goes off and, and from the minute they get up until the minute that they're, they're on that wheel, and they never have a minute to reflect on who they are and what they're doing, what their reality is and how it came to be. They just have to, to do what they have to do in order to survive and they have to produce and, and, and uh, work till you drop and then shop till you drop and, and they never have a moment to reflect. We are being given the gift of the whole world becoming like a Buddhist monastery. <laughs> this is like very cool. These are optimal, um, optimal conditions for meditation, for self-reflection, for prioritizing what's really important to us in our life. What do we, when this is all over, what do we really want to go back to? Do we want to go back to a rat race? Or do we want to build a different world? So, although I'm acutely aware of the dangers and the unpleasantness in, inherent in this situation, um, Netanyahu just uh, told uh, Naftali Bennett uh, uh, that, that uh, the, the armed forces, that the Israeli army should be in, in charge of seeing to the welfare of old people. <laughs> you know, I heard something like that and I went, uh -huh. <laughs> And then I calmed down because I remembered that the general of, Tz the mayor of Tzfat is also a general. And, and he's a wonderful person. He doesn't run Tzfat like, like, like a boot camp. 
Um, so it's it's really not so bad. But you know, it, it, the, my first reaction to it was like, <laughs> oh no, the army is going to see to my welfare now. Um, So yeah, it's dangerous and it's awful. Um, I like to be alone. I mean, I, my lifestyle hasn't really changed appreciably. I can be in the house for two weeks at a time. I do it all the time. Um, so if for introverts, this is kind of heaven. Um, for extroverts, it's, it's a time to uh, do the kind of inner work. Like my daughter said, if you can't go out, you have to go in. Um, this is the opportunity for people that normally externalize uh, to go in. And when we do, we will see that government is the reification, the externalization, the actualization apparently out there of that which rules us within. All of the parts of ourselves that are unconscious or subconscious uh, get externalized in the form of the, the outside. Jung has talked a lot about this. Um, so this is a good time to watch some of the videos about the, the, the Buddhist monks, read up on some Jung, reread Jung. Um, and and, and uh, see how that which we don't confront within become the situations that we are seeing without. So the very fact that the world is going through this means that uh, there's massive subconscious stuff that we all need to deal with and, and we're being given the opportunity to do that. Um, I've been watching a number of videos uh, by people who have um, dissociative identity disorder, DID, um, it used to be called multiple personality disorder, um, and I, I, I so relate to them, I so understand. If, if, if you watch those videos, you'll, you'll really get a very, very deep insight into what humanity is. Um, DID is brought about by experiencing extreme trauma before our personalities um, are welded into one solid personality and the coping mechanism that's used by some people who have undergone extreme trauma before the age of seven to nine is that they become different personalities and each of the different personalities deals in different ways with protecting the core but sometimes those personalities um, are at war with one another and some of them may harm and self-harm and, and then a person who has DID will wake up and find that they've been harmed and they don't know where the wounds uh, came from. I'm going to give you a very, very deep insight into um, what God's core problem is. <laughs> God's core problem is being alone, eternally. Most of us are so removed from that agony that we can't imagine the excruciating pain of having everything and no one to give it to. None of us, people now, because we're in isolation, I, I can bring this up because most of us find being in isolation for two weeks an unbearable thought. Imagine being in isolation for eternity. This is the core lesson, this is the core takeaway that we're supposed to be getting from what's happening here. 
How does God deal with the agony of being all alone, being having no one? God develops the most extreme case of dissociative identity disorder. God imagines that God is us. We are God's hallucination, God's fantasy, God's protection mechanism against being all alone. That's what we are. Vis-a-vis -vis each one of us who is to us, the core personality. Everybody else is other. But actually, everybody else that we're seeing around us are our altars. Some of those altars hurt one another. And we experience experience extreme amnesia. So when I become Binyamin Netanyahu or Kim Jong-un, I am in a complete state of amnesia. I don't know that I'm becoming them. And being them I may do things that I wouldn't do as Doreen Dotan. Doreen Dotan has no desire to enslave people, to, to close down the, the, the judicial system, to create a, a, a nuclear arsenal. We're back. <laughs> Doreen Dotan has no desire to run a bank or to drink adrenochrome or to um, be a Christian or to, um, I don't know, be a ballet dancer. My core personality has no desire for those things and doesn't do those things. My alters do. What I'm trying to say is we are all one another's alters. Each one of us to us has the core personality and the other ones are the alters. That's how God manages with being alone. One of the interesting things that I, I've been hearing from people with dissociative uh, identity disorder who know that they have it, but we all have it, they know that they have it, <laughs> is that um, they're not necessarily interested in integration of, of their different personalities. Uh, they certainly don't want to be disturbed by their personalities. Uh, they don't want to wake up with burn marks on them. They don't want to wake up uh, to know that they've harmed someone um, when they were someone else. They want to live in peace with their other altars, but they don't necessarily want to integrate. But this is exactly it. We need to recognize that all of the people that we see around us, whether we like them or not, whether they do things that we find repulsive or not, whether we agree with their politics or not, whether um, we find them pleasant to be with or not, are in fact altars of the same one God who is dealing with it's loneliness. And we need to be 
more patient and more understanding and more accepting of one another. It really helps for conservatives to know that some of their altars are our flaming Democrats. And it really helps for saints to know that some of their altars uh, traffic children. It's not them, it's us. And if we can accept that, if we can use this time maximally well to be able to accept that all of humanity is our, are our altars. There's a wonderful expression in, in Mayan. I forgot how to say it. It translates as when people greet each other. They say, you are another me. We all need to understand that. That we are all vis-a-vis -vis the others, another me. And just as we learn from people who are aware that they have dissociative identity disorder, each one of the personalities exist because they are entirely necessary. So those faces of ours that we don't find pretty are there because they absolutely have to be in order to protect the core. And this time of, of introversion, uh, enforced introversion, and enforced time that we can use for self-reflection should be a time in which we um, accept our shadow selves and if not try to integrate them into one that may be desirable in some cases but it may be a good idea to stay separate too um, paradoxically we become more able to integrate into one multifaceted personality when we reach m maximal individualization. That's a paradox, but it's true. The idea is not to lose yourself. The idea is to maximize yourself, not in the sense of being negatively ego, in the sense of being totally accepting of this I, this particular I, this core personality, which I've taken on. When we can do that, we begin to see the aspects of everybody else in that core personality, and we become more accepting of those who are different than us, those who repel us, those who um, we refuse to acknowledge as ourselves. So let's lose, use this time, use this time wisely and well. And um, I, I've heard that there's an online course now for free. There's a very popular happiness course, well-being course that's offered by Yale University. I understand that that course is online now for free, so look it up. Um, I think I have the link for it. If I do, I'll put it in the description below. The description below is though that I'm... never mind. <laughs> and, um, um, I would suggest to listen to some of the um, the Buddhist masters. Um, they're very, very far advanced. I, I don't accept the Buddhist principle of uh, impermanence. Uh, when we start learning Torah correctly, we actually start to create things that are permanent. As long as we're living in a world of, of that's transitory, um, 
we're, we can be pretty sure that we're not learning correctly. When we learn correctly, precisely what happens is that we create things that are eternal. So long as we're not creating well, they're transitory, junk in, junk out. If we're learning correctly, we do create things that are eternal. With that, the Buddhists are very advanced, and I would recommend that you uh, find some of them, starting with Thich Nhat Hanh. He's one of the, the greatest, and next to his videos, there are usually other videos of other Buddhists that are, that are worth watching. Um, and um, to, to accept this opportunity for what it is. It doesn't matter what another one of your personalities, intentions are. You know, people always say, they are doing this, they are doing that. They don't, they don't know who they are exactly. It's a very amorphous kind of a they. Um, but it's certainly they see it as other. It doesn't matter what another's intention might be in enforcing this time. What's important for us is how we use it wisely and well, even if one of our other personalities doesn't intend for our welfare by enforcing this. A stronger personality can use it positively and our stronger personalities come to affect our weaker personalities. Some of our weaker personalities have more material power than some of our stronger personalities because some of our stronger personalities don't need all that material stuff. So it may look like somebody who has the military industrial complex at their fingertips is one of our stronger personalities and we need to bend to them. No, it, it, it's, it's actually the other way around. They actually need, need us who can deal with less stuff um, more than we are under their sway. So let's come out of this um, well and let's be kind and patient with ourselves and, and accept our, our flaws and, and, and that which we don't like about ourselves because when we do, we will see that those are facets of whole other personalities. And that the more that we can accept, the more peace um, we experience. Um, the Hebrew word shalom comes from the root shalem, which means whole. The more we integrate all of the other personalities in ourselves, the more whole we are and the more peace we have and we can project, we can radiate out to the other personalities and our extremities who need that. Thank you for listening.